I have hereditary under eye bags. I inherited them from my grandmother. I've had them my whole life. Any advice? My bags are puffy and dark, but the puffiness is what bothers me most. I look tired when I'm not tired. What type of blepharoplasty is recommended at my age? I doubt fat transfer is the answer for me. Thank you for your question. You state in your question that you have hereditary eye bags that you got from your grandmother and you wanted to know what type of blepharoplasty is best for you and you also made a comment about fat transfer probably not being right for you. So I think that the photos you submitted are extremely helpful and clearly they demonstrate significant under eye bags. So I'm an oculofacial cosmetic surgeon practicing in Manhattan and Long Island for over 20 years and addressing under eye bags is something I do pretty much every day. And I'll tell you a little bit about first what the situation is anatomically for you and then how we approach someone like yourself when, you, when they come to our office. So why do you have bags under the eyes? Well you're right, the uh, genetics is a very big factor and it has to do with an anatomic structure of the septum or the, this sheet that uh, separates the front of the eye to the back of the eye and the fat behind the septum. And so when fat pushes forward, it's referred to as herniated fat. So these are like fat pockets that have pushed forward and have gone over to the point where they're just sitting there and no matter what you do, and a lot of our patients come to us after trying creams and, and tea bags and all kinds of different things and find that none of them work, um, that what you're dealing is with an, an anatomic issue. So that brings us to the topic of this, the surgical procedure that's best appropriate for you. Now there's two ways to address the fat pockets. One from the outside called a transcutaneous blepharoplasty and one from the inside called a transconjunctival blepharoplasty. With, so for someone like yourself, we typically would do a procedure that would be a combination of things to address the different aspects of lower eyelid rejuvenation. We're, we're in a very remarkable time where not only can we reduce the fat pockets, but we can also address the skin quality and some of the volume issues that also coincide with this, this uh, puffiness. So when we do uh, uh, take care of a patient like yourself, we'll commonly do what's called a transconjunctival blepharoplasty, which means addressing the fat from the inside of the eyelids. We would combine that with the use of something called platelet-rich plasma, which is derived from your own blood and it's a concentration of the growth factors that are used for healing. By placing this, these growth factors under the skin, we're able to stimulate the skin to have more quality. And when you think about aging, loss of collagen, loss of blood supply, platelet-rich plasma helps improve and address by generating collagen improving the blood supply to the skin. It adds a nice quality to the, uh, to the under eye area which often has a lot of shadowing and wrinkling. Last but not least we also frequently use a fractional CO2 laser. There is a, certainly a role for a limited amount of thermal energy to tighten and stimulate collagen from the external approach as well as refresh the top layer of skin. In the end, this, this combination where I like to say is the whole is greater than the sum of the parts turns out to become a very, very nice uh, rejuvenation of the under eye area. Another thing to, that I would also like to share is that when you dress under eye bags, it really makes a remarkable difference in a person's appearance. They look less tired, they look more energetic, and it's almost like doing a facelift without doing a facelift. So I think you're on the right track as far as pursuing a, a, a solution. I agree with you that fat transfer is not the solution here. There have been many, many colleagues who have tried in vain to use fat to augment and restore volume. Part of the basis of this is the fact that we lose fat and we lose volume in the cheek and in the facial 
uh, structure as we get older. Unfortunately, the skin just doesn't tolerate that much volume, and the fat can be um, can it be taken by the skin in a variable way. You see, fat is a graft. You're taking it from one part of the body away from a blood supply, placing it in another part of the body, and anticipating that new blood supply will keep it viable. Well, the fat can, can be absorbed anywhere from 30 to 70 percent. And a lot of times, the, the sequential inflammation and scarring can create irregularities and lumps. I have patients who come to me from all over the world who have had fat transfer, who have uh, uh, requested that I actually try to remove this fat. I, am, I can tell you it's technically very, very challenging and it is always a more complex operation than doing a, a, a lower eyelid blepharoplasty. So with that being said, I recommend you meet with some qualified, experienced cosmetic surgeons and find someone who resonates with you. In addition, be mindful of your anesthesia options. We perform these procedures under local anesthesia with light IV sedation. That means we don't use general anesthesia. We perform this procedure in our own Joint Commission approved facilities. Therefore, it, it, we basically have the benefits of a hospital structure and uh, equipment and process and personnel. We have it within our own office. And for our patients, they really like that it's, uh, it's much more comfortable than going to a freestanding hospital surgery center or something like that. So these factors are also important. So the type of surgery, the anesthesia, and the facility are things that you should learn more about as you do your investigation. So I hope that was helpful. I wish you the best of luck, and thank you for your question.